Welcome back to the channel, guys and gals. I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm totally ecstatic right now. I really am. So, uh, I haven't really been able to do a whole lot this week because it's been a very busy week. But I do have some stuff coming up for this weekend that I'm going to be working on and sharing with you all, are, all including the articulated cattle cars. They are getting painted this weekend because I'm going to be in Mobile, Alabama. It's supposed to be nice weather. And these are going to be getting painted this weekend so that they can get completed. And when I get home, we can actually see these run at that time. Uh, the other set, I will be starting to work on those this weekend as well. And hopefully have those completed shortly. As we all know, both these articulated to the Kinky Share articulated. And these have been a very long process. So as of the last update y'all saw... Um, I was waiting on getting some extra metal uh, to make the new coupling, which I'm still going to do. Uh, since I'm here in LaGrange, Texas right now, I'm not too far from a tractor supply, so I'm going to try to see if they got some that's in a 2 or 3 millimeter thick um, metal that I can cut. Basically, the same as that. Um, what I've done is this has all been backfilled and sanded so it's nice and smooth down here so this all looks like one one piece. Uh, each car will be getting its grab irons and footsteps on each end. Um, so I'll be doing that this weekend before paint. Shouldn't take too awful long to do that especially for the center car or as I like to call it B car. Um, Wipe it down with the prep, primer it, and get ready to start shooting and painting. So this should be done, painted, and ready to go back on the rails this weekend. Sorry while I put this down. I'm just going to set this right back up for you. All right, and the articulated Kinky Shuro, which we've all seen the um, stuff on, the video on. I do not have the couplers here on the truck, which means they're at the house. I did ask my son, and he said that he thought they were there on my roll top desk. Um, again, trucks have been painted. They're in. Got the nice little hole right there with the sleeve in it. Both of them, both of them do. Um, I am going to have to wind up hand painting this if I can get to a Hobby Lobby this weekend. Um... I've got to see if I can find the Mediterranean Blue, because I'm really wanting to kind of go prototypical with this one as well. And part of the reason why I'm looking at prototypical paint is that this is part going to be part of the excursion train. Now, for all you new viewers, a while back I started a train being O-scale um, for the F&M Railroad. For your new, new subscribers asking, what is the FNM Railroad? Fergales Nogales de Mexico. Now, I cannot roll my R's for nothing. I have tried, tried, tried. I cannot roll my R's. So, FNM Railroad was a very big name in Mexico. So was the NDM. Those were one of my two favorite railroads, along with the Pennsylvania, BNSF, and a lot of American, and along with some of the British locomotives. Not British rails in particular. Now, their steam air, yes, big fan of it. Diesel air, eh, I kind of like the transition area right there, right there where they're going, like the Class 35 Heimic that you've seen I have up here. Um, you know, stuff like that. So the idea with the Kinky Shiro car was, yes, I did go by the blueprints that were sent to me through a friend of mine down in Mexico. Thank you again. And I was also sent the color codes from another friend down there in Mexico. Again, to both of you guys down there in Mexico, Louis and Alfonso, thank you all so much for the help that you gave me along the way. This car is actually cut out and was put together in the dimensions that was written down and on this the blueprints. 
Now, if you decide to do something like this, understand that if it's a design from Japan, the Kinky Cheryl cars are of Japan kits. They were kit cars. A lot of countries ordered them. Egypt, Europe, um, America. You know, there was a lot of countries that did. Mexico was the biggest purchaser of them. Great car. Look up their history on them, and you'll understand why I kind of like them. It's a very simple design. Their motto was to create something that was usable, but leave as little footprint on Mother Nature as possible. And they did exactly that. So yes, even here in, the, in America, we have some Kiki Sherrill cars here in the USA. In fact, they're pretty much up in the Northeast Corridor. A lot of people know them as Amtrak. No, not the ones that we like down here in Texas, the way we like to call the pregnant well car. No, not that one. It's the others. It's the ones that look like this. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a interesting thing. All right, so uh, I wanted to kind of do some little test because I have used some stuff a lot in the past like Art Deco paint. I have used Apple Barrel and been able to clear coat it and still get the same results as Rust-Oleum. So I kind of wanted to, on this video, kind of give you a glimpse of what we're going to look at, even though it will probably be covered up because I will be having to hand paint this whole thing. Um, it's going to be quite an undertaking uh, and the reason why I'm got to hand paint it is that because the way the windows are going in on this um, it will wind up causing me some problems not a lot just a little bit um, but taping it off and knowing how thin the windows are yeah, I don't want to cut the windows because then it makes a real mess once they're sealed up to fix them. So, a lot of hand painting is fixing to be done to the Kinky Cheryl Articulates. Um, as most of you know, I am a big fan of articulated stuff. Rail cars, locomotives. If it's articulated, I'm all for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out one of my brushes here, and we're going to use a brush to just kind of do some minor paint right here. I just kind of want to see how we're, what we're looking at. Again, I can sand it off. No big deal. Primer, no big deal. A little bit of paint in there, nothing major. Again, I'm not after to do this perfect. Even though this is a pretty much an old school trick. Going all the way back to the 50s and 60s. Believe it or not, model railroaders back then, if they didn't have it, which spray paints weren't real popular back then, hand paints were, this is what they did, they'd hand paint them. Hand paint them and then clear coat them, if they had the ability to uh, clear coat them. I know they did have, uh, you know, the machines that they would thin down the paints and stuff. That I do know they had. 
they had the little airbrushing machines. Uh, my father's, which did wind up going to the wayside. All right. Even though I kept it, um, last time I tried to use it, it just was not firing up the way it needed to. So you got to start spraying with it, and the motor, the air compressor would pretty much, yeah, say, nope, it was done after all those years. So it was a, it was a shame because it was a good one too. So here's the light blue, which probably isn't that correct. I mean, it is a sky blue. <sighs> okay, so at least they call it a sky blue. So I'll have to... get in there and have to uh, make sure I can get away without having to use up a, a bottle of or a paint can you know sprayed it in in there to paint this that'd be cool um, I don't like to waste paint so if this acrylic paint right here works out good, and I can get very close to prototypical or the F&M colors I got now, we're perfect. All right. Yeah, this one looks just almost prototypical blue. Now, the F&M did use a two-tone blue paint that was a um, Mediterranean blue and like a sky blue. The weird part about all that... is even though it still had an orange stripe in it, had four orange stripes in it. They used to call it the Smurf Train down in Mexico. Kind of funny when you think about it. Also, while I've got y'all here, so I'll let you know that I will be starting the layout um, into this month. And when I do that, as I'm working on it, I would like to go live to give y'all some, basically, see something different from me. Again, each and every one of you subscribers, y'all really have no idea just how heartfelt it is. But if you like this channel and like what you're seeing right now, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that like button and drop some comments. Again, this, this uh, channel, we're all about having fun here, tips, tricks, stuff like that, and everything in between, motorcycles, trucks, you name it. And again, you'll see my kids on here from time to time. They like to photo bomb me, so photo bomb and or video bomb. Some of the older subscribers can tell you that yes, my youngest will video bomb me quick, fast, in a hurry. I don't know why he likes to do that, but he does. That's all I'm not him. All right, 
So here we go. So there we have what we, well, in this video, it almost looks like the prototypical color. Now, again, this is not professionally done. It's not striped off, nothing like that, okay? This right now is just to kind of give you a general idea of the color the cars are going to be. Um, these will be the two-tone blue. Oddly enough, when I kind of, yeah, I kind of played around and stuck them on behind the hymen, they looked right at home. Very weird, but hey, it's okay, you know. Um, I got to do some hard sanding this weekend to get the roof on this one and get the plastic in. And this one will be ready to get sealed up and be painted. And again, I'm going to have to hand paint it. So hopefully I can get as close to the F&M excursion train colors as possible. If you ever pay attention to an excursion train, a lot of times the colors are richer and deeper than what they were prototypical. This will probably be, well, I've got this one plus the big box car. And maybe one more car I will wind up doing in the F&M excursion before I start doing the prototypical paint, uh, paints and before I start doing the um, presidential uh, Mexico train, which was pretty much stainless steel silver with a green, white, and red striping in it. At least all the pictures I found. I can't find a name on it, so if anybody does know and was able to you know, see if there was a, a railroad name on it, please let me know. Because uh, I'd like to get one or two of those done as well. So yeah, that's actually kind of cool. I'm kind of kind of liking how that turned out. That's kind of cool. Different brush is definitely going to be needed if I have to do this. Because that's, uh, not that I'm opposed to doing it. But, yeah. It's going to definitely take some work. It's going to be a fun project, but it's going to be rewarding in the end to have it done and actually have it on the rails. So, and to have to make coupler mounts right here for the knuckles to be able to line up. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the little quick update video and got to see something that was maybe a little different, kind of seeing the direction I'm going to have to go at the Kinky Sharrows and the Articulates. Now, tomorrow you will get to see the um, priming job, which I will get filmed for you, all y'all. And you'll be able to see that the cattle car is getting primed. As always, please keep the shiny side up, rubber down. Please be safe this weekend. I want to see each and every one of you back. And I will see you all then. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And please be safe. I'll see you all tomorrow.